Hey guys, and welcome to the video in another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This is part two from yesterday's video. Today, we're gonna focus mainly on Nintendo uh, systems. And boy, there is a lot to cover, especially on the Switch scene. So we're gonna kind of move along. A lot of it are things that we've already covered multiple times in the past. So I'll just let you know what's been updated and whatnot. But if anything is new or has a significant update, we'll just spend a little bit more time on it. For those who are new to these segments, you can look down in the description for a brief summary on what they are all about. But very quickly, I basically cover anything that I think the viewers or subscribers of this channel would find interesting, helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining in the hacking, modding, homebrew, and pirate scenes. There's a focus here mainly on consoles and handhelds, but we also dabble in various other things like PC, Raspberry Pis, phones, and things like that. Okay, so a lot of stuff to cover, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And we will kick off over on the Switch scene, lots to cover, starting with the news that more accounts on the Switch have been compromised. And now back in April, there were around 160,000 accounts that fell victims to hackers. The hackers exploited a security hole via the old Nintendo network accounts used on like 3DS and Wii U in order to be able to access Switch accounts. And then they went ahead and they did some illegal transactions via the associated PayPal accounts. Now it turns out that just recently an additional 140,000 more accounts have been affected as well. Now Nintendo says that less than 1% of these compromised accounts were used to make fraudulent purchases. They have an ongoing reimbursement process, so they are getting people back their money, the ones whose accounts were compromised compromised and fraudulent purchase were made on. Now, Nintendo is working on fixing those security issues. Just keep in mind that those accounts that did get compromised, the hackers still made away with names, emails, date of births, and other type of sensitive information. If you own a Switch, the best thing that you can do is to make sure that you activate the two-step authentication process for added security. And next up, we have a couple of really big updates. First to Atmosphere, now on 0.13.0. This has been adapted to support the latest firmware, 10.0.4. Four. There's been a lot of changes and updates to this, but most of it is, you know, stuff that's under the hood. You can read up on all of it here. Most people will use this zip file, which has Atmosphere as well as the Homebrew Launcher and Homebrew Menu included. But if you want to use Atmosphere Plain Jane Vanilla, then as usual, you know the routine. All you need to do is use the Fusey Primary bin file. Next, we have Hecate which has been updated as well as Nix. Again, full support here of 10.0.4. You can check out what's new in this version here. One of the things that stands out, of course, is even faster boot times, which is always a plus. Then down below, you can see the additional changes, additions, fixes, and things like that that have been done to Nix. When you scroll down to the bottom, the zip file that pretty much everyone is gonna use is here with all the files that you need. And for most people, it's just a matter of copying everything from the zip and just pasting it to the root of your SD card. All right, moving right along, we now have an update to Moonlight NX. This is something I've covered in the past multiple times. It's a way for you just to stream your gameplay from your PC to your Switch. And if you never used this before and are interested in doing so, make sure you come here, check out the installation instructions and the usage and all that stuff. There's also the controls that are listed here to get the latest release. As normal, you would go to your releases page here, check out the change log for what's been done in this update, and then grab the Moonlight Zip, copy and paste everything everything from here straight to the root of your SD card. Next, we have an update to NX NAND Manager. This is a tool that's actually used on your PC to backup, restore, encrypt, decrypt, and resize your Nintendo Switch's Sys or Emu NAND. The NAND 
whether it's this or emu i really don't mess with it too much on my switch but this might be something that some people may find useful there is a plethora of information on this github page i wish every developer would do this there's pictures detailed instructions there's even a breakdown here of all the storage types that are supported um, with this program i mean it, it's just very well done in terms of giving you details and information kudos to the developer eli boa or eli boa however you pronounce that I, again i wish all the developers did this over at the releases you will see here that there's been quite a few bugs that have been fixed and whatnot make sure you grab the zip file that pertains to your setup and then you can try it out all right guys next we are going to hit up a couple of cosmos clones for your switch starting with void and x now i've covered both of these before because now it just got updated so it has the latest hecate and the latest atmosphere that we just covered as well in case you haven't used this before it's very similar to cosmos it shows you here all the homebrews that are included and there's a ton of them the payloads that are included and even some pc tools that are included uh, for use on your pc side if you want to use them there's two main versions here the full and the light the full contains absolutely everything kind of like cosmos did and then you have the light version and it tells you here what is not included in the light version basically the pc tools have been removed all of the payloads have been removed except you still have hecate and then a few of the homebrews have been removed as well now what's really interesting is that in this update when we come here we can see that there's a couple of options now to the full and light versions you have the normal and you have the hbg i'm guessing hbg version means that the hbg shop will now work again now hbg shop is tinfoil it just has an hbg shop theme as well as the location config file has been changed up a little but if that works then technically tinfoil should work as well because that's really what it is so it tells you the difference here between the normal version and then the hbg shop version basically it just loads up atmosphere differently so the hbg shop or let me just say hbg version um loads atmosphere using chain loading uh, fusi primary and um, it just makes atmosphere load slower now i don't think it makes atmosphere slower it just makes it load and boot up a little bit slower so if you're interested in that here are the various versions all of these versions have the latest sig patches in them as well so you have the es fs and acid patches in any of these that you use so you don't have to worry about that the void 5.0 is the regular full featured version then you have void 5.0 hbg edition which is the same as the 5.0 except it's designed to work with the hbg shop and then you have the two light versions the regular light and then the hbg edition light as well so just grab the one you want to use take the contents out copy and paste them straight to the root of your sd card and you'll be good to go and next we have that other Cosmos type clone, this one by Team Neptune called Deep Sea. Now for me, Deep Sea is the one that comes the closest to Cosmos. And basically it's only because of a couple of things which I'll show you right now. Now this just has been updated. It also has the latest atmosphere and the latest Hecate that we had covered earlier. This comes in two flavors as well. You have the minimal type package, which only comes with atmosphere and Hecate and all the basic files you need to make these things function and then the normal package which includes atmosphere hecate and then a ton of homebrews now the difference why this one comes just a tiny bit closer to being like cosmos is because cosmos had like the cosmos toolbox and it had some cosmos specific homebrews that were meant for you to use only with cosmos and this has that it has the deep sea toolbox deep sea updater and deep sea cleaner so it's very similar to cosmos in that sense however it's also very similar to void and x because aside from those things it has many of the um same homebrews and stuff as void and x and 
Cosmos. Now, when you come here to the releases, you have a few choices. There is the standard full version here, which is Deep Sea 141. Then you have Deep Sea Patched 141. This is exactly like the full version, but it includes all of your SIG patches, the ES, FS, and Acid. So you don't have to worry about putting them in there yourself. And then you have the minimal version, the minimal version, again, comes with Atmosphere and Hecate, but I believe the patches are not included, so you will have to add them manually. If you're not sure about how to add the patches manually, you would do it just like you did in Cosmos. I have tutorials in my Switch tutorial section here on YouTube that show you how to do it for Cosmos, and the latest one, you would follow the same exact steps to do it here. And next we have an update to SysTune. This is an overlay menu for your Switch and it allows you to play your favorite music in the background while you're either navigating around your system or even playing a game. As you can see here, uh, you can set up different playlists and you have some nice basic controls and whatnot. This is something that I've been using and I really like it a lot. It's one of my favorite overlays. You can see here what they've done in this latest update. They've made some improvements here and there. You can just grab the zip file, copy and paste everything to the root of your SD card. Next, we have an update to Simple Mod Manager. Again, something else that I've talked about in the past. Now, this is useful for those of you who have modded your games. Like, let's say you've upped the frame rates or maybe you've added mods that have messed with the color saturation or have improved the graphics some a little bit here and there, you know, certain mods like that. So if you have various of those mods for different types of games, then this will help you keep everything organized and you can enable them and disable them at will. And yeah, it's really useful for those of you who use these types of mods in your game. Now this will not add the mods. You have to add the mods yourself. This just keeps them nice and organized and it allows you to turn them on and off at will. You can come to the releases, grab the latest version and this one adds a Tesla overlay menu. So you can either use the applet one, the .nro, or you can just put the overlay version into the overlay folder. Now you can have both. However, I would not open the overlay. If you happen to have the applet already open and going, you might cause the universe to implode onto itself. And lastly, for the Switch, we have an update to NSUSB Loader. This is a program I've talked about before in the past. It is used with your PC. And once you install it, you can use it in conjunction with various homebrews that you may have on your Switch, such as AWU Installer, Tinfoil, Gold Leaf. And what this does is that it allows you to install NSP files and other types of files directly from your PC into your Switch, either via the USB or over your home network wirelessly. So you don't have to take those files, put them on your SD card, and then install them from your SD card. They can just install straight from your PC either via USB or wireless. I've actually used this quite a bit ever since it first came out and it does work really, really well. What I like about this latest update is that it pretty much gives you everything that you need in order to set all of this up before you had to install a different program called Zadig and that one allowed you to uh, download and install the drivers that you needed, but now you can do it all right from here, which is ultra convenient. Make sure you grab the latest version, which is this one here, the NS USB Loader 3.0.jar. Don't use the legacy because it's the older version. All right, guys, we are done with the Switch scene. Let's head on over to the 3DS where we have a couple of things to talk about, starting with a huge update to Anemone 3DS. This is a theme and boot splash manager for your modded 3DS 2DS systems. Hands down, even before this update, this was the best theme manager out there. But this update 
literally takes it to a whole nother level. Make sure if you're gonna get this that you read here uh, the notification that they posted up. And then when you look here at all of the changes and improvements, it's like a mile long. It goes on seemingly forever. There is so much that has been done. And this hadn't been updated in a while. It's actually being called the Revival Edition, but in actuality is version 2.1.0. If you like changing out themes on your modded 3DS, 2DS, this is an absolute must have. It makes it so easy to do so. You get lots of features like maybe using the visuals of one theme, but the sounds of another. Uh, it, it's just absolutely fantastic. And when your system is connected to the internet, you can just scroll around, let's say on your PC or even on your phone looking for themes. And it seems like there's an endless array of themes out there. And many of them have the little QR code. You just scan it with your system and that's it. It begins to download super easy and then it installs. Normally I use just the SIA file because it's the easiest, but there's various file formats here, you can use the one that best suits your needs. And next up, we have an update to Twilight Menu Plus Plus. This is, again, something else that we've talked about many, many times here. It's an emulator type deal for your modded 3DS, 2DS systems, which allows you to play ROMs from various types of Nintendo consoles and Sega as well, such as Nintendo DS, SNES, NES, the different types of Game Boys. When it comes to Sega, you can play uh, Sega Master System ROMs, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive. Anyway, when you look at the releases and you check out this latest update to what they've done in terms of fixes and improvements, it is pretty good. So I suggest that you get it. But the main thing here is that they now added PC Engine and Turbo Graphics 16 capability. So now you can play PC PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 ROMs in addition to all the other ones from those other systems. It does tell you here to make note that you do need to use Nitro Graphics in order for this to work and you will have to launch the ROM twice. So when you launch it the first time, it will not work, but then you need to launch it again. That's just due to how the emulation works. And then the TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine ROM will work just fine. The 7-Zip menu contains everything you need to have some nice emulation fun, minus the actual games, of course. And lastly, for the 3DS, we have an update to PKSM. If you have a modded system and you like Pokemon, chances are you already know about PKSM. This also is the first time that this particular homebrew has been updated in a while. It has a lot of features and gives you the ability to do many things, including on the fly modifications to all of your data. It works with various uh, Pokemon games on your 3DS. 2DS systems. Of course, it's primarily used for cheats. Anyway, when you go to the releases, you can see that this latest version, 9.0.1, is just like a quick little hot fix. The main release was 9.0.0, and you can see there all the changes and improvements and fixes and things that they have done, which is also very extensive with this update. You can scroll down to the assets, click on them if you don't see them right away, and that's where all the files are. Just pick the one that, again, best suits you. And we will wrap this video up with an update to a homebrew for the Wii U. This one, I believe, is called Nusply. Regardless of how it's pronounced, it's actually a handy little homebrew. This is a simple packet loader and installer. More specifically, what it allows you to do, it allows you to search for content directly from Nintendo's update servers. You can type in or search for a game using like a game's title ID. And if it has an update, it will find it. And then you can download and install the update for that specific game straight from Nintendo's servers right into your system, which makes it ultra handy. When you check out the latest releases, you'll see here in this one, they've also added a channel version. Now the debug options, I'm guessing that that's more for developers and the likes, but for end user, you would either use the version that works off of the homebrew launcher like normal, or you can get this newer version that works via the channel. 
And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation to the channel, of course, the best way to do that, as always, is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone. Be careful out there. Be safe, but have fun. And we will see you on the next one.